It was January of 2010 and the iPhone 3GS had been selling for eight months. The third generation of the iPhone would go on to sell 30 million units. This was changing the consumption of smartphones at that time. These phones were not really called smart at that time either. But this was a big problem for Google because the Android adoption at this point of time was really low. And to change this, Google launched the Nexus program. In January of 2010, Google launched the Nexus One. This phone was manufactured by HTC and was programmed and the software was purely designed by Google in an attempt to showcase the best Android experience you could get at that time. Now, with all the hype that this phone generated, it didn't manage to be a success at all. In fact, this phone was deemed a complete failure because it only managed to sell 134,000 units in about three months of originating sales. In comparison, the iPhone was selling in millions. In fact, in the first 70 days of sale, the first generation of the iPhone managed to sell about 1 million units, and the Droid phones, which are also Android-based phones made by Motorola, were also selling 1.5 million units in about 70 days. Now, all of this didn't deter Google from the Nexus program. In fact, the next generations of the Nexus, the Nexus S and the Galaxy Nexus were designed by Samsung and made by Google in the Nexus brand to improve the Android adoption. And they worked towards doing that. These phones were more affordable, had sleeker designs and appealed to a wider audience. The problem with the Nexus program at this point was that it was not widely available. Most of these phones were either locked into carriers or were not available across the globe and in markets like Asia where the DIY community is big. But things started to change for Google when the Nexus 4 was launched. The Nexus 4 was manufactured by LG and was heavily marketed by Google as a really impressive Android device. This phone was popular because not only of the design of the Nexus 4, but because of some of the hardware choices that Google had made at this time. This phone was also more affordable and was made available in several countries across the world, unlocked, which was a big deal for the Nexus brand at that time. The Nexus 5, the next Nexus phone to be launched, was the most popular Nexus phone yet. This phone was also manufactured by LG, but showed off design capabilities and also some of the best hardware that Google had worked with. This phone had the first generation of the Snapdragon 800 processor, an eight megapixel camera with optical image stabilization, something that phones lack even today. It also had an IPS display, which had a really good touch response and several other hardware design features, including a sleek body and a really impressive Nexus logo on the back, which really appealed to customers. This phone was also available in two color options, a black and a white. The white one was my favorite and I still own it till today. The Nexus phones also opened up another part of the Android operating system. They opened up development communities. A lot of people started to enjoy the unlocked bootloaders of the Nexus phones and the fact that these phones would get Android updates almost immediately after a new version of Android was announced led to the popularity of these Nexus devices. This also opened up a whole new chapter for ROMs and custom operating systems designed on the base of Android, which could be tested on these devices. These phones were inherently designed to be development devices, and this encouraged a big push in the development industry and created this whole community around Android operating system, something that Google themselves didn't anticipate at the time of the launch of the Nexus program. The Nexus 5 was so popular, in fact, that Google started to get pushback from some of the other manufacturers that were licensing the Android operating system. Companies like Samsung and even HTC started to get worried about the popularity of the Nexus program and the phone eating into sales of their respective devices. Now, Google was worried about this because of the fact that the long play for Google was to get Android adoption up. And with the popularity of Android now increasing, Google started to pull themselves away from the Nexus program. This was evident in the Nexus 6, which was not even marketed by Google. This was a phone manufactured by Motorola and sold under the Nexus name, but it was sold through Motorola channels. Even in India, this phone was riddled with issues. There were several issues with the display. The back panel would completely fall off and the stickers and the logos were peeling off the phone. This showed that Google was stepping away from the program and this also showed that Google didn't have a lot of input on the device. Now this continued with the Nexus 6P and 5X, which were the next generations of the Nexus phone and the last Nexus phones made under the Nexus banner. Both the hardware and the software was worked on by Huawei and by LG. 
and Google played very little role in these phones. In fact, in India, the phones were not even listed on the Google store at the time of launch. Now, these were the least popular Nexus phones from the company, and after these phones, the Nexus program was completely pulled back. This led to a big uproar in the Nexus community as well as the Android development community because the Nexus devices at this time were the only phones that were getting instant Android updates every time a new version of Android was announced. Now, along this period, Google had also shown off several of their Nexus tablet devices as well. The Nexus 7 was shown off and this HTC manufactured Nexus 9 was also released, but it never reached India. Now, ending the Nexus program at this point of time was a really bad idea, according to me. And we'll talk about this in a little while. But before we get into this, let's talk about the next generation of the Nexus, dubbed the Pixel phones. The Pixel phones were designed to compete directly with the iPhone. They were also priced the same. They were also created in a more premium design aesthetic, and they were targeted towards the Apple iPhone's popularity. These phones were manufactured under the Google brand name, and this is the first time that a Google phone was sold without revealing manufacturer information prominently. If you go back and look at the Nexus devices, including their packaging, the major manufacturer of the hardware was always prominent on the boxes, but this time around, this was a Google phone. A Pixel was a Google manufactured phone. It didn't really matter if LG or HTC or whoever designed the phone, it was sold under the Google brand name with a Pixel moniker. Now, the first generation of the Pixel uh, did really well for the company in comparison to the previous generation of Nexus devices. About 2 million Pixel phones were sold in the first generation of the Pixel and the Pixel XL in the first three months of uh, the launch of the phone. At this time, the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus were launched, and in comparison to the Pixel's 2 million sales, Apple was selling about 40 million units of the iPhone at this point of time. So the Pixel phones were still struggling to approach the kind of sales figures that Google wanted from these devices. The second generation of the Pixel seemed very rushed. It had several issues with the hardware, especially the XL variant had several issues with the display, which was manufactured by LG at that time. And a lot of updates were pushed out to improve the overall performance of this device. But inherently, the phone had some hardware issues which could not be fixed and hence reduce the sales of the Pixel phones. Since then, Google has launched several Pixel devices, and while they've been riddled with issues, the main primary focus for Google has been the camera capabilities and the machine learning-based software features that, that these phones offer. This has also set these phones apart and given them a niche in several markets. And enthusiasts who've managed to enjoy Pixel phones from the very beginning continue to swear by the camera capabilities of these phones and would buy into the Pixel devices year after year almost like loyalty towards this Pixel device. The Pixel phones also have the best software experience till date as far as Android is concerned, and they are still the first phones to get the Android update every time Google announces it. But this has also changed because several other companies like OnePlus also offer stock Android experiences and will give you the latest version of Android almost immediately after launch of the phone. And this one factor that kept Google manufactured phones popular has now changed and pulled away from the popularity of the device. Now, it is said, according to reports, that last year Google manufactured only 3.7 million Pixel devices, and this year the Pixel 6 series is expected to do double of that. Now, this is a really low number because in comparison, in just 2021 alone, from September till now, Apple has managed to sell about 80 million units of their newly released iPhone 13 units, which include the iPhone 13 mini, the iPhone 13, the Pro, and the Max. Now let's go back and discuss why ending the Nexus program was a bad idea for Google. Now Google has shown that it needs to own a smartphone under their name. They've invested heavily in several companies over the years. They invested in Motorola to create better smartphones. They also invested in several other projects like the Project Ara phone. And they also invested in HTC, which is where most of the influence of the modern day Pixel phones is coming from. But for Google to continue into this Pixel journey, a lot of things have to change. First of all, they've also pulled back from markets like Asia, and a lot of countries, including India, no longer get Pixel devices. This is a big issue because there is a massive enthusiast base in Asia, and especially in India, where a lot of consumers want the Pixel phone. And this can be seen in the sales of the devices and the prices at which these phones are selling in India at this point of time. In fact, you can buy the Pixel 6, 
and the Pixel 6 XL on Amazon at this point of time for almost 40% to 50% markup. And this should be an indication to Google that there is a big market for Pixel devices in India. The Pixel 2, the Pixel 3, and the Pixel 3a did really well in India. The Pixel 4a was also launched in India, but the Pixel 5 and the 6 have not been officially launched in India, but they have been available in the market. Now, ending the Nexus program was not a good idea for Google, and this shows in the current state of the Pixel devices as well. The popularity of Pixel phones is not very high, and while Nexus had started to gain popularity, it also led to the formation of this big enthusiast community around development and Android operating system customization, which is not the same with Pixel devices. Sure, Pixel phones still get the latest Android updates, but the way you were able to customize and mod your Android phone at the time of Nexus phones no longer exists. In fact, today you can install Android 11 on this almost 10 year old Nexus device, which goes on to show you that there is a massive community around these Nexus devices, and those people would have really appreciated a new Nexus phone. The Nexus phones were also comparatively more affordable. They offered the best hardware, but they were also priced at a much lower price in comparison to Pixel devices, and hence they democratized the consumption of Android phones. Now, it is evident that cheaper versions of phones can work really well. You've seen this with the Apple iPhone SE, and Google has seen this with their A versions of Pixel devices. The 3A, the 4A, and even the 5A have done really well for Google and the Pixel phone. What Google needs to focus on is making their phones available in markets like India, and also making their phones available for a lower price, offering similar features that their higher end phones do. This will enable people to get involved with the Pixel community, and this will also generate hype around the whole Pixel consumer base. Uh, Google has missed out on hardware and constantly pushed their software capabilities. Google has also not focused on their designs of the phones the way they did with the Nexus phones. And Pixel phones are basically the same design year after year with minor changes to the back of the phone. This can change if Google starts to push towards creating a more democratic Pixel program. But the problem with that is that they will continue to get pushback from other manufacturers who still continue to license the Android operating system, which is a big chunk of the income for Google, at least in the Android side of things. And it leads to major income from other services that Google does bundle up with the Android operating system. And hence, leaving that or annoying those people will not be an ideal situation. So for the Pixel program, this is the maximum amount of marketing push you'll see from Google at this point of time, unless some things change. And for markets like India, we'll still have to pay a royalty on the original prices of devices if we want to get the Pixel phones in India. This is what the situation is at this time. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team iGAN. This has been Bharat and I'll see you in the next one.